well to introduce for our next conversation, Dr. Omali Matthew, an international relations analyst. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning, and I'm happy to be on ADBN today. Now, this morning, doctor will be looking to give us more insights following the outcomes of the FOCAC 2024 summit with Nigerian focus. And this is also off the back of the Africa-China relations with President Bola Tinubu in attendance and the pledge by the Chinese president to invest more in the African continent. Now, Doctor, the current administration of the day had looked to highlight some of its policies in line with attracting foreign direct investments. Now, off the back of the Africa-China summit and the amounts of sums that have been pledged by President Xi Jinping, how satisfied are you with Nigeria's focus on divestments in 2024? Yeah, um, it is good to diversify our economy, especially away from uh, our oil-dependent economy. So um, the FOCAC, uh, the focus of this year's focus, FOCAC is to, for China to partner with African countries to see how Africa can um, can can catch up with the rest of the world in terms of development. Um, if you look at this year's FOCAC, the, the theme of this year's FOCAC uh, focus on joining hands uh, to advance civilization and uh, China, Africa to have sh a shared community um, for, for a, a better future. Uh, when you look at it, you see that China believes that Africa presents a very, very important segment of the international community um, with about 1.5 billion people. Uh, uh, to combine with China with about 1.4 billion uh, people. So the, that's about talking about a partnership with about 3 billion uh, people together. So um, this strategic engagement between China and Africa um, is to um, uh, also uh, enhance um, the, the civilization of the world uh, to look at how um, we can uh, partner to ensure that um, most of the challenges we are facing in Africa um, are overcome. Uh, and that is why uh, the key thematic area for this uh, year's conference, uh, they were looking at um, uh, global civilization, they are looking at global peace, they are looking at um, uh, how to enhance uh, in infrastructure and so on, science and, science and development. Now, um, the, only, the only instructive thing is that um, Nigeria has a lot to benefit from China. Uh, China has been able to um, carry out a, a lot of developmental projects in Nigeria. And, um, for example, our railway modernization uh, system, uh, which China has been leading. Uh, so in the area of infrastructural development, China has done a lot, and Nigeria needs to consolidate on this. Um, we, uh, we have also benefited in the area of um, other infrastructure, like roads, airport mod uh, remodeling, and so on. So... Um, Nigeria has a lot to benefit, and I'm happy that uh, President President Bola Tunubu uh, reiterated this point at the FOCAC. And uh, with the type of delegation he took to the FOCAC, um, the Minister of National Planning, um, Minister of uh, FCT, and so on, um, you could see that um, Nigeria has a lot of respect and regard for China. And I think China also has a lot of respect for Africa. Now, now just to highlight so, someone on this delegation, and we did see the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the FCT minister and the Chinese civil engineering construction company, which has been, much like you said, very instrumental in uh, the construction of capital projects in Nigeria. Mm. That happened on Saturday in Beijing towards the end of the FOCAC. Mm. Many were asking the... The nitty gritties where some Nigerians raise an eyebrow of how much indebted we are to what many perceive to be a good fortune. Of course, $50 billion in the next five years to the African continent from China in particular, 
but persons are somewhat concerned about some of the moratoriums on the returns of this kind gesture. Uh, do you think that the federal government needs to be more, would I say, transparent with the moratoriums and some of the news we see around some of the fleets being seized on default of those meritorium? Yes. Um, every country um, uh, borrow money. Even the United States, uh, even China itself. Um, they, they take loans, they take, they, they, they take grants uh, to, to, to show up whatever resources that they have. So to that extent, Nigeria is not wrong in taking credit facilities. The only problem is the application. After taking this credit, how judiciously have you used this credit? And how accountable uh, have you been in, in, in disposing um, this credit facility? China has invested close to $200 billion uh, in the last couple of years, between 20, uh, 2000 to 2006. Uh, no, to 2026. Between 2020 to 2026, China has invested colossal amount of money on the African continent. And this is a, a very deliberate way of, um, of penetrating the African continent. Don't forget that um, uh, within the international system, uh, there is always a, a tussle between the, the great powers, America, um, Europe, and then, um, and then um, uh, China. And um, one of the areas that China has left fallow for a very long time was the African continent. So these investments by China is to take a foothold on the African continent. And I think they are succeeding. Uh, with the FOCAC, it shows clearly that uh, China wants to play at the highest level within the international system. Africa has 54 54 votes at the United Nations General Assembly, which is very, very significant. Out of about 195 countries um, of the world, Africa has 54, and that is why China is looking at that. But that's not all. Um, these loans that we are taking, or that China is, is giving to us, I, I quite agree with you that these loans are, are definitely, uh, there are a lot of strings attached to it. For example, all the agreements you, you asked me about. Um, China is not Father Christmas. They also want to uh, benefit uh, from whatever transaction they are having with the African con continent. And that is why um, many African countries are giving them the leverage to come and take raw materials from the continent. And um, whatever China is giving to us, they also want us to rub their back. So uh, the enabling environment is given to them to tap into our huge mineral resources in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Nigeria, and several other African countries. Chinese companies are operating, uh, carrying out their activities, mining, um, renewable energy, and so on. So um, it's not that, um, yes, I agree. Most of the terms of agreements have really not been very favorable uh, uh, to uh, to Africans, uh, but better than the Bretton Woods institutions. Uh, so, so in comparatively, you, you feel it's way better. Yes, I. Uh, Why so, sir? Yes, I feel so because if you look at the IMF and the World Bank, um, most of the conditionalities they give to uh, African countries, um, um, we have been complaining for a very long time. Um, it's a situation whereby um, you, 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 you tie uh, many of these loans to um, you, must, you must import certain category of uh, products from uh, those countries. Uh, China is not insisting on those. Uh, China, China prefers you to give them a enabling environment to come in and, um, and, uh, and do business. Uh, they are not uh, ready to give even conditions as much as human rights and democracy and so on that the West will want to impose on, on our people. It is good. Uh, China is not interested in um, mingling in the internal affairs of most of the African countries. They are only interested in having strictly 
economic relationship. Now, in, 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 a, in a bit to give a paranomic, uh, paranomic view of the 24 years that FOCAC has vested interest in the African nation, mm. would you say that countries have largely benefited more owing to these diplomatic relations with China across Africa as a region other than some of the giants in Congo, Nigeria that have some of these minerals that are very interesting to the Chinese investment? I wouldn't say wholesale that um, the countries have benefited tremendously in one way or the other. Um, in Nigeria, we can all see the latent impact of uh, Chinese investments. Um, uh, in the, like I said, in the railway, in, 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 we can see it. The Lagos Ibadan uh, railway is running, the Takwe Wari. Uh, Ajokuta rail light is running and so on. So uh, we, ca we can see all those. Uh, we can also see road construction like from uh, Abuja, uh, Makodi, uh, no, Lafia, Makodi, and so on. Uh, all these projects are going on and these are, are, are projects from the Chinese. So uh, they are going on. But that is not to say that uh, we have benefited uh, the benefit the, 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 the the beneficiary as beneficiary of the loan that is not to say that um, china has also not benefited in several ways uh, many chinese companies many chinese products huawei for example where our president uh, visited their the company on the sidelines of the of the focac uh, huawei uh, has been into telecommunications um, we have been uh, helping us to develop um, our 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 telecommunication sector uh, also uh, bringing in a lot of uh, phones and and so on. So um, to that extent, Chinese companies have benefited tremendously. And then in the past, a lot of Chinese uh, uh, companies have been given a lot of leverage uh, to 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 operate uh, within the country. So uh, the relationship is symbiotic. Uh, China is benefiting we are benefiting but like you said we have to be careful in in taking these loans uh, because a situation where we we take these loans and then um, repayment becomes an issue or when we begin to, to service those loans it's not it's not good enough um, ugly situations like seizing our aircraft or uh, situations where we find ourselves uh, facing international embarrassment is it's not good enough so we should be able to reduce more. We have enough resources. We have enough resources. We have en enough manpower. We have enough. Uh, we all, all we need to do is to reduce our spending rather than relying more on Chinese or even Western uh, uh, loans. Uh, in, in, in typical international economic relations, uh, we know that uh, one of the major arguments for us to develop we have to, uh, as much as possible, look more inwards. Now, you've spoken so glowingly about President Bola Metinibu's outing at the FOCAC 2024. Mm. And another thing to his credit, which some economics appearing on this program have analyzed, is a reduction in our debt servicing. Mm. We've seen a reduction from 95% to there about 65% mm. since President Bola Metinibu came on board. Do you think with this trajectory, and uh, the new relationship is looking to form in terms of diplomacy with China. We can see a gradual reduction in our debt servicing over the next years he's in office. Well, uh, sometimes government statistics are always doubt, uh, statistics that are being re reeled out by the Bureau for Statistics. Why, why so, sir? I, I doubt that because some of those statistics are just put there to show up uh, government image and to give the impression that all is well and uh, well, we know that all is not well. Uh, so some of these statistics to me are always very, I take them with a pinch of salt. The, the truth of the matter is that we are taking loan and we are overtaking this loan uh, in as much as we need this loan to develop. Uh, we, ne we, 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 we need to reduce the level of our external borrowing a situation whereby we have a deficit of almost 1,000% deficit in our budget. 
the entire revenue, I understand, in the last um, uh, budget circle uh, was about six trillion, and we had a budget of over over eighteen trillion. And so the deficit is huge, and most of these loans are just to carry out uh, to even service uh, uh, um, recurrent expenditure, uh, which is not good enough. Uh, so. When, you, when they reel out these statistics, uh, it, it beats my imagination because what, what we see or what we know is that uh, debt, uh, that um, uh, we are still borrowing hugely from uh, international bodies. And this borrowing um, is, is really affecting our economy. So I, I, I want to use this opportunity to advise government that, look, God has given us all the resources in the world. Uh, we should cut down the cost of governance, cost, cut down uh, bogus expenditures, uh, run a lean government, and, and use most of the resources that we can harness within uh, our, our, our boundaries. Um, many areas in the country remain largely undeveloped. Many resources remain largely untapped. Uh, yesterday I was listening and I heard that uh, coal is still being used in the UK and several other countries to generate power. In Nigeria here, we are not... We have it seems a, as if we have jettisoned it. Yes, we have Since jettisoned. the advent of oil. Yes, we have jettisoned coal. Um, we have not been able to harness our gas system to the level that we need. Uh, we have not been able to, 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 to solve, to even leverage on solar, on other renewable energy. And those are the areas that we should be focusing on to ensure that uh, the lives of our people uh, is improved. Even little things as building and managing a refinery, we are not being able to, 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 to do that. And, and, and it, 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 to me, it's a shame that we have to bring China to even build airports for us, build even roads for us with all the engineers with all the local construction companies we have why should we do that and um, it's, 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 it's it calls for serious concern now, now persons are also looking at the previous editions of focac that have been held since the year 2000 mm. five were held in beijing mm. one in ethiopia one in egypt one in south africa and the other in senegal mm. many asking as a pride of place for nigeria that has enjoyed some relationship with china shouldn't uh, the chinese be looking to at least hold one of their next summits in nigeria as a statement to its pledge to expanding diplomatic ties and trades with nigeria well uh, the choice of where focac is hosted is purely the decision of china i i i i don't know if nigeria has requested to do that but uh, being the largest, uh, uh, one of the most populated, the most populated country in Africa, I think um, what you have said should not be lost on China. Uh, Nigeria hosting uh, FOCA just like Senegal did uh, would definitely um, enhance Nigeria's status uh, within the international system, and I hope that China will consider that. Um, the, the only uh, issue I see with that is that um, just like China is wooing uh, African countries, we know the U.S. African Summit also holds. Uh, we know that Russia African Summit also holds. Uh, we know that there is the um, European African Summit that also holds. So uh, we are the beautiful bride. Um, Africa is the continent of the future, and um, the, everybody see the potential in Africa. They see the type of resources, the raw materials, and uh, what we have. And uh, everybody seems to be scrambling uh, to have our attention. And we have to maximize um, this. Uh, so, yes, we are relating with China. So also we are relating with uh, the U.S. So we are relating with Russia. We are relating um, with, um, with the European Union. And... Um, uh, we see how it goes. Um, we, we we are only interested 
in our own interest, what will benefit our people, what will enhance our economic well-being. So that we are relating with China does not necessarily mean that um, we still do not have a good relationship with the West. Now, another angle to highlight here, much as trade and diplomatic ties are important, following mm. President Xi Jinping's pledge, mm. is the pledge of $141 million in military assistance to African countries. Mm. And it's coming at a time when Nigeria particularly is grappling with counter-terrorism efforts, also looking to stem insurgency and other agitations in several parts of the country. Many are asking, other than have the monies injected into that fight, can there be a borrowing of manpower? Much like people keep citing when the U.S. had to come and rescue one of their citizens who was kidnapped in uh, Niger and brought into Nigeria. Other than collecting the money and buying some of this unmanned drones that we've been craving for, can Nigeria diplomatically seek aid from such countries in tackling some of our insecurity challenges? Yes, uh, Africa insecurity is caused by so many problems. Uh, for what, as an international security uh, analyst, I, I do not believe that uh, COVID insecurity can be tackled purely by buying military equipment and pushing um, uh, personnel to crisis area. If you look at what is happening in Sudan, if you look at what is happening in most parts of Africa, even in Nigeria, uh, there are a lot of uh, food security issues. There are lots of unemployment issues. There are lots of... So human security is very critical in solving the insecurity in Africa. And I think, yes, uh, China is pledging to give uh, money or to donate equipment, military equipment and so on to, to Africa. But um, the security challenge in Africa goes beyond that. We have to look at the human security component. Um, the large army of unemployed and idle youths, um, the issue of food security, food shortages, uh, terrorism, and so on. So um, whatever partnership we are entering with the international community, we have to look at these issues to solve issues of poverty and other human security issues that is fueling the conflict in Africa, I think that is where um, we should we should focus on. On your question about successive uh, f uh, fo fo uh, focus on successive meetings of this uh, FOCAC, um, yes, uh, a lot of some of these issues are just talk shop. For example, China is committing fifty billion dollars to for, to be shared by fifty four African countries. That is just like a small drop of water in an ocean. So it's really very big. Uh, when you consider the quantum of problems or issues that are to be solved in the African continent. But uh, I, I must praise China, at least they, they have tried. And uh, But we must not, in Africa, we must not rely on foreign aid loans and grants. We should, we, we, we have what it takes. For example, most of the raw materials that we we mine and just send to Europe and America. We could we could add value. We could process them here. We could so any company that is coming here to mine must not take the raw uh, material away. You have to set up uh, uh, processing companies uh, so that they can employ our citizens. You have to add value to the, the raw material here on our soil uh, so that we can maximize whatever income that will come in. So um, you talked about trade, the issue of balance of trade. We have to balance our trade with China. As it is today, the, 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 the balance of trade, the gap is so huge. The trade um, um, deficit is in favor of China and we must try to, to balance up. Uh, we supply them uh, crude oil, supply them um, raw materials like logging and, and so on, um, diamond, and, and other lithium now is the latest. So, um, so China should, um, we should try as much as possible to reduce the trade deficit between uh, Africa and China if we want to uh, really maximize 
the relationship that we have. You also talked about the jostle between 55 countries mm. on the continent for this available uh, loans that are also going to be on the table. The, the challenge is also in the numbers of slots available for training. Mm. We hear that uh, there are only 6,000 slots for the military mm. and 1,000 slots for police and law enforcement officers mm. who are willing to come and have some sort of training in mm. Beijing mm. in a bit to also beyond the financial aid, mm. strengthen the capability of the security architecture in the African continent to mm. fight issues on banditry and terrorism. Mm. Uh, those numbers in the large demographics of what we need, especially in terms of recruitment back at home, where we hear the Nigerian Police Force and Police Service Commission giving two different uh, narratives about the 10,000 police officers that ought to have been recruited and the issues hindering such recruitments. How do you feel about our approach to these issues of national security? Uh, yes, on issues of national security, there's a lot that need to be done. For example, I am hearing that there's a law now to be amended for the Inspector General of Police to, to either continue or, or whatever. Um, we, we must play by the rules. and um, We take issues of security, we, we try to politicize issues of security, which is not good enough. On the training of 6,000 military and policemen, I think what China is trying to do is to um, organize, do a train the trainers. It must not be that they will train the entire Nigerian army or the entire Nigerian police. But um, out of the 6,000, if about 500 is from Nigeria, for example, and they are trained, they are supposed to bring that knowledge back and also uh, replicate that knowledge and send, train others until it goes down to the grassroots. But you see, we, our security is grossly inadequate. Um, um, when we are talking about 10,000 policemen to man a country, of 36 states, 774 local governments, down to the wards. So most most of the wards you go, um, you don't you see one policeman, you know, and then so we are we are we are we are adequately under policed. Um, I, I I heard that the current figure is about 100,000 or thereabout or 200,000. Uh, so that is still very very inadequate. And that is where my support for um, to to deregulate the police system. Uh, I, I support the state police argument because um, security should be local. Uh, we know the role the vigilantes, the multinational joint tax force, and all the other quasi security organizations have been played. And, and they are also very important within the security architecture. So, um, so whatever training China is offering, whatever we are learning from them, we should be able to replicate it within our own security system. So that, um, we, because we, without stability, without security, uh, there's no way the much needed development, all the loans that we are taking, all the funds that we are taking, um, uh, will not will not be able to judiciously apply them and achieve results. So, security is a very very important aspect uh, of national development that we must take very very serious, and we must do everything to to harness. And when we talk of security, we think it's just in terms of personnel. No, like I said earlier, food security, human security, all these are very important. Uh, government must do something about um, about uh, the number of uh, unemployed youths that are lazy around. Employment certainly has to be tackled. Uh, the issue of unemployment has to be tackled. The issue of poverty, uh, uh, shortage of food. It is even worth now in Nigeria that look at within the last one. Look at the inflation level. Um, it's a threat to national security. Uh, you cannot sleep with your eyes closed now because of the, 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 the level of desperation, the level of suffering that people are going through. Uh, so most people have resort to trekking. Most people, uh, so you, you discover that life is becoming very tough. Yes, in as much as government is giving assurance that 
all is going to be well within some time. But um, the citizens are really bearing the brunt of it. And um, you don't need China or you don't need the West uh, to tell you that, uh, um, that the citizens are, are really uh, suffering. Now, what, why this connects to what we are discussing today uh, is because most of the policy that our government is implementing now, that is why I told you earlier, I said China doesn't get involved in policy the, formation, the internal policy dynamics, unlike the IMF and World Bank. China does it. But the IMF will insist you must privatize, you must deregulate, you must uh, remove subsidies, you must do all this before we can give you loans. All these exorbitant conditionalities. Yes, yes. That is why I told you earlier that uh, the Chinese loan seems more amenable because of the stringent conditionality of the Bretton Woods institutions. So when when the Bretton Woods institutions tell you you should go and remove subsidy, they are not looking at the multiplier effect, the immediate impact of this subsidy removal. They are not looking at what the damage it is going to cause to the economy. Uh, you know, and um, you, you, you advise countries to remove subsidy, and then you are not looking at um, the, the wider impact. Look at what has happened in this country. Somebody is earning uh, 30,000 as minimum wage, uh, or the highest paid, let's say even the permanent secretary, uh, is earning, let's say, uh, 400,000 or thereabout. And then you, you remove subsidy, and suddenly you are buying fuel at almost 1,200 liters. We are buying gas at almost 1,500 per kg. And then, uh, so where are you going to get the money? Where are you going to get the money? When they pay, your pay package uh, has been wiped out completely. When you receive your salary within two, three days, you are finished spending it. So how is that person going to survive? I, I went to buy um, augmenting tablet, some the other day, and they told me 18,000. So that means it's for somebody who, who is sick and whose salary is 30,000 to just buy a pack of augmenting tablet at 18,000. Uh, that has wiped out almost more than half of your total earning in a month. So government should be able to look at uh, this. Yes, we, we, we know that subsidy is causing a lot of uh, 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 eating into government finances. But again, if we are going to remove subsidy, this is going to be the impact on our citizens. And now we're talking about removing subsidy here in Africa. Some of the Western influences on our policies and advice from the likes of IMF and the World Bank mm. still have countries like America largely subsidizing food in their country. Yeah. Whilst here in Nigeria, the citizens are buying it at the forces determined by the market force. Mm. Uh, do you think that this advice is given indeed in the interest of government revenue other than in the interest of the citizens? Well, um, from government argument, it's in the interest of government revenue because government, what is the argument? So you, you, you remove subsidy so that government can have a lot of resources to carry out uh, infrastructural development, to carry out, to, to enhance our economy, general economy. That is the general argument. But you see, these things don't just happen. You know, these things don't just happen. When you remove subsidy, and then you begin to spend the money recklessly on, on things that do not even have direct bearing on the lives of the people, then <laughs> uh, how does it affect the people? Okay, um, if, if, if you remove subsidy and then all you are doing is to increase um, uh, allocation to the National Assembly or uh, to do a uh, coastal way from Calabar to Lagos or to do some other uh, projects, you know, uh, there's no deliberate uh, government policy that will bring about uh, massive industrialization. There is no deliberate uh, policy to bring about textile development, which was very critical to the development of the Nigerian economy in the 80s and 90s. You know, 
where you have the textile mills in Kanu, in Kaduna, and and and, and Lagos, you know, you, where, where where we we bring out a lot of textile materials. There's no deliberate um, policy to to enhance the automobile industry, like Stair, like uh, Pujo Automobile, like Volkswagen in the past, where we have those big 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 in automobile industries that would have driven the economy. Now with government diverting from all this, where are we? Even ordinary refinery, we, we have not been able, for the past one year subsidies have been removed, a uh, lot of money has been saved, but even to fix even the refineries so that we can even refine our crude here, we are now resorting to relying on Dangote. So when you look at China vis-a-vis -vis the, the West, you have no option than to say, okay, at least the Chinese um, are offering a better deal. Are better offering a better deal than the West. And, and also listening to President Xi Jinping making his statement, it, it almost felt like a sentimental appeal when he spoke about the historical injustice that has been done to Africa, citing the opium wars and the signing of unfavorable treaties in Africa. It's an appeal to the African nations somewhat to get past the wounds of colonialism and undue Western influences. But we see a difference in the approach between Anglophone and Francophone countries. Some of the Francophone countries are looking to even uh, remove France as the official language in what they call a decolonial drive. For these Anglophone countries, much like Nigeria, if we're to buy into what President Xi Jinping is preaching, how do we move past some of the negative effects of our colonialism and the advantages or gains from this broader romance with China? Yes, if you look at the underdevelopment and dependency theory, which is ordinary political science and political economy, if you look at the argument, uh, scholars like Gunter Frank, Samir Amin, Paul Baran, you know, the, 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 even the common one, Walter Rodney, they talked about the, the devastating impact of colonialism on the African continent. Um, and yes, um, what Russia is doing and what China is doing is not totally different from the Western incursion into Africa. It's not totally different. But they are doing it in a more strategic way. Okay? They are, they are doing it through strategic partnership and engagement. But essentially, it is still the same. And what was the solution? Uh, preferred by the other development and dependency theories. The solution is this, we must delink, we must, we must delink and protect our economy. Because if, because the whole essence of relationship with the outside world, whether it's China, whether it is the Western world, it's about trade, it's about market. Like I told you, Africa has about 1.5 billion people and it's a huge market. And everybody, both the West, China, everybody is scrambling for this market. They want to produce and bring to us to buy. They want to market their finished products. So um, in Africa, what are we producing? So we, must, we, we, we will keep on relying on their finished products. Cars, pharmaceuticals, uh, tech, uh, phones and so on, we will we'll keep on relying on them. So what innovations are we bringing to play in Africa? What are the things that we are investing our money in research? Why are we jettisoning, jettisoning our traditional medical medicines? Why are we jettisoning our religion? So many issues. And then we are culturally enslaved. You know, we take the, uh, we do Everything we are doing, our African culture, our African is almost being eroded. Now that is that was that's what globalization, whether from the West or from, from China, China, that is what it brings. Uh, it brings to us. So and that is what it makes us to perpetually be dependent. It make 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 Africa to perpetually be dependent on other on other people, uh, whether it is China or 
So, and this culture of dependency can only be curtailed if Africa will look inward, if we believe in ourselves, if we develop ourselves, uh, if we buy Africa, if we we'll form a synergy within ourselves, if we are able to build economic partnership. NEPAD was a very, very important program. NEPAD, New Partnership for African Development. But down the line, where how have we fed? The African peer review mechanism. There were so many good ideas that we were supposed to push in Africa that were supposed to enhance our competitive edge with the outside world. We have not been able to to, to do that. So um, relying on, on foreign support, relying on foreign aids, relying on foreign partnership um, uh, will not do us any good. If we really want to develop then we have to look inwards and adopt their technology. China did it. Uh, China took technology from other places, develop it, and they, they, they know where they are today. So Africa, we should be able to do that. And a lot of people have argued that the future of Africa lies within Africa. It lies within our collaboration with each other. It lies within our building institutional partnership among African countries. And that is the way to go. Well, we must thank you, Dr. Omali Matthew, for this objective insight into the outcomes from the FOCAC 2024 with Nigerian Focus. We appreciate you. Thank you very much.